Um, hi everyone, my name is Audrey Woods. I'm the Assistant Dean of Enrollment Management at the Klein School of Law at Drexel University. Uh, we are located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If you're not familiar with where that is, we are on the East Coast, right in between New York City and Washington, DC. So really um, accessible to uh, a lot of great cities um, outside of Philly, which is also a fantastic um, historic city. Um, there's my email address. It's ae79 at drexel.edu. If I can ever answer any questions, uh, I'm happy to do so. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about other legal programs. So there are other programs um, outside of the the LLM that you we've been hearing about today. Um, these vary greatly from school to school, so I'm gonna speak kind of broadly about them. And if any of them interest you, um, again, I'm happy to um, to talk with you um, or definitely go to other to go to law schools' websites and see what they have offered um, because uh, some schools will have all of these, some will have one, some will have none, it just kind of varies. Okay. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is called the Master of Legal Studies. You may also see this called a Master of Jurisprudence or um, just there's a, several different names. Um, this is a master's degree coming out of law schools and these are for folks who do not have um, a previous education in law. So people who um, have English undergraduate degrees, um, science, any, any sort of other background in law might be interested in this program. So um, these are usually around 30 credits, so they usually take uh, one to two years to complete. Um, some of these programs are offered online, um, some of them are offered on campus, some have both options. Um, the ideal candidates include uh, people who are interested in working in different industries outside of law, but who want to work with the law or do work with the law in some way. So things like healthcare, um, finance, law enforcement, um, employment regulations, um, different kinds of fields where um, you may be touching the law, but you don't necessarily need to be a practicing uh, attorney. Um, think big business um, with all of the compliance and regulatory work in international businesses. Um, this, this person can be very helpful to those folks and save them a lot of a lot of money. Um, so upon completion of the program, um, you'll understand how the law applies to fields in which they work. Graduates of this program cannot take the bar exam. This is strictly a master's degree, um, and they cannot practice law in, in the United States. So there are different types of M um, MLS, is what we call it, a Master of Legal Studies, similar to an LLM. Um, one, you can do a general, where you're taking a few mandatory cl classes, um, and then you have a flexible approach to your other classes. So you can take in specific um, fields or you can kind of pick and choose things that you're interested in. So mandatory classes that are typical for a program like this are an introduction to US law, um, ethics courses, legal writing, um, just some real basics to make sure that you understand the legal uh, US system and then you can kind of dive deeper into specific subject areas. Um, most of these programs have some sort of thesis or research program or uh, capstone uh, or experiential education kind of component to them that varies by school. Um, or there's a specialized MLS um, where you, you would kind of pick a subject to really focus on. You'd still have a few of those core requirements, but then you'd have um, a, a curriculum that would be really mapped out for you towards a specific field. So I have listed here. Um, these are some of the ones that our school has. Um, but this varies widely from school to school as well. So things like healthcare compliance, um, cybersecurity, uh, financial regulation, employment law. Um, um, there's lots of different opportunities at, at many different schools. Um, the value of a master's degree. So the legal market is, is more global and more interconnected than ever. And we're finding that a lot of people are working in these regulatory compliance kind of fields. Um, and we need more people who understand how to read and analyze the law and how to put policies in place and train people. Um, and this is an international issue. Um, so no matter where you're working in, in the world, if you're working for a large company that's doing business overseas, um, there is opportunity here. Um, the, the, this kind of degree, specifically the ones that focus on compliance and risk management, which many of them do, offer 
even more than just understanding you know the legal framework of these issues um, they're talking about training they're talking about um, writing policy um, so you're getting into a little bit more practical things that often frankly um, a lot of of classes and, and the traditional JD program don't go into that kind of detail because it's they're doing different kind of work. Um, so that's a really, really more similar, I, I think, in, in many ways to a sort of like an MBA, like a business kind of degree. Um, and then, of course, it's an opportunity to um, to practice English, to become proficient in English, to understand um, issues in American compliance and regulation. Um, and it's also going to open up a lot of doors to working in international companies. The next type of program I want to talk about are JD programs for international students. So a Juris Doctorate is the traditional three-year law program that our domestic students must uh, take in order to sit for the bar. There are a couple of options uh, for international students to take to, to finish with this JD um, on some different timelines. So the first one I'll talk about is a program that we have at Drexel, and I know a few other schools do as well. It's called We call it the two-year global JD program. You may call it you may hear it called um, an accelerated program, um, something like that. Um, this program uh, allows you to transfer in credits from your undergraduate or undergraduate equivalent law degree into the three-year program, uh, which means that you can finish the JD in two years as opposed to three. Um, there's no LSAT required. This is sort of a loophole in our regulations, um, and, and so it, it totally benefits you. Um, so this program is two years, and um, we'll talk a little bit about the benefits of this. Um, first of all, a traditional LLM program is one year. This program allows you, you know, to study a little bit longer in the US, which is great, um, and take more additional coursework. Um, it also means that you're graduating with a JD, you're, you're eligible to sit for any bar in the United States, um, which could open up more opportunities for you. Um, in terms of you know taking the bar depending on where you're staying where you're where you're going to school um, and and what your um, your career goals are um, the next sort of version of this you might see something called uh, different things but from an LLM to a JD and so some schools allow their LLM students who, who do well their first year um, to sort of transfer into that JD program again no uh, LSAT required you're transferring in credits um, this program takes three years, just like the traditional uh, three-year program. Um, so those are the two different kinds of, of um, JD opportunities for international students. You also may see something called an SJD program. Uh, these are for students who intend to pursue an academic career. Um, you'll have it, it's a doctorate. It's a doctorate program that comes with a dissertation. So the the standard uh, three-year traditional JD program doesn't have a dissertation requirement, um, but this SJD does. And so courses and research could take three to five years, depending on your research goals and what you're doing. Um, many schools in this situation do require that you have that one LLM first. Um, there's also no LSAT required. These JD programs are, these SJD programs typically are very competitive. Um, not that they're, they're all competitive, but the SJD in particular is really looking at your academics um, because of the, um, the intensity of doing a dissertation. And another program you might see offered uh, at some schools is a research fellow. Um, these also vary greatly in, by the institution. And this is an opportunity uh, for academics to conduct research and to teach. Um, in most cases, these people are not taking courses. Um, they're, they're there to do you know, research and to teach. So if you're really wanting to sort of you know, sit in the classroom and learn, then this is, this is not the right opportunity for you, but this may be for some folks or someone that you know. Um, that is the end uh, of, of my presentation on other programs. Um, I do encourage folks to, to look into all the different kinds of things, the different kinds of LLMs, the different kinds of opportunities. Um, and to share with your friends that may have uh, backgrounds in different um, different areas other than the law who are interested in possibly that MLS. Um, it's a very relatively new uh, program for many schools, so I don't think a lot of people really know about it yet. Um, and there's even more law schools are coming on with programs like this year after year, so it's something to keep um, keep your eye on. Uh, again, my name is Audrey Woods um, at 
the Thomas R. Klein School of Law at Drexel University. And if I can ever answer any questions for you, I'm happy to do so.